uh, we're gonna actually take you through an entire um, morning routine, uh, basically our controlled articular rotations. As far as each individual one, I'm gonna be coaching her through them, but I strongly suggest that you actually go to the Cars playlist and watch individually each one so you can really get a grasp of them and really work towards getting better at the details of them. So keep that in mind. Why are we doing this? If you don't take your joints through a full range of motion every single day, I guarantee you'll lose them. Don't believe me, don't worry about the science of it. For a week straight, don't put your hand above your head. Seven days later, try to do it. Let me know how it goes. I guarantee you it's worse than it was. Take that with your whole entire body. I want everything to work on all my clients, including myself. So this is the easiest way to make sure that every single day, no matter what, we are at least staying where we are with our mobility and our active range of motion. What are the benefits beyond that? When we're getting to those outer limits of our range of motion, you're gonna be communicating with the joint capsule and we're gonna actually be even better at those things. So even if I'm catching a football in the end zone all the way back here, if I'm spending time in that range of motion with my cars every day, I'm gonna be that much better at it. If I'm playing basketball and I'm shooting and flicking my wrist every single day, when I do it with my morning cars every single morning, it's definitely gonna have carryover and it's gonna be something that I'm able to maintain and even get better at. So tons of body control, but also just overall, you're basically brushing your teeth for your joints. You wouldn't not brush your teeth, so why wouldn't you take care of your joints like that? So let's get into it. First one that we're gonna do, we're gonna make sure that we irradiate on every single rep. In terms of tension, when you're training, it should be anywhere between 40 to 100% tension. If you're just doing rehab or getting things moving, like in the morning for this, it could be 30%. The real thing is we don't want any pain. If you get any pain, we wanna slow down, stop right before that point and make your circle smaller. I'll show you a couple of individual things like that. So the first thing, she exhaled her ribs down in. We got some air trapped here with some tension. She's gonna curl her chin to her chest, pick a direction and rotate from the neck. Notice her shoulders are not moving, her ribs are not rising. As she comes back, she's gonna gently tilt her head back. If she feels any pain, she's gonna make her circle smaller immediately and do not go into any pain, especially with the neck. As she comes this way, rotate fully, then get to there, slowly get to your chest, scrape all the way through. She's gonna do another rep so you guys can follow along. So we're doing two reps in each direction. All the way this way, nice and slow. Notice the speed, notice the intent. We're keeping tension the whole time. She has not even let her fist go because she doesn't want to leak that power and that energy. We're irradiating throughout the whole body. Once she hits the midline, reverse directions. So as you're following along, keep yourself nice and uh, smooth from no compensations. You can use the mirror, that's ideal. We're coming all the way around again, hitting that midpoint. Once we hit the midpoint, try to increase your tension on every single rep. So a little bit more tension. Fight for a little bit more of that circle as long as it's pain free. All the way back, around, eventually find your chest, smoothly go back to the middle. So that's going to be how we do our neck. There's two. Now we're going to go into our thoracic car. You're going to go ahead and cross your arms. From here, we're gonna take a big deep breath again. Exhale the ribs down and in. Now start to flex your spine, so we're gonna round forward. Now she's gonna pick a direction and rotate. The hips are not gonna follow you. Once she reaches her rotation, she's gonna do a little side bend, just like that. And then she's gonna extend her spine all the way up and around. Picture your rib cage is what's actually turning. Then she's gonna flex her spine down, come back to the midline, same direction, keep it simple. Let's go to the right again. Then you're gonna extend after that little side bend all the way up. Again, belly button down's not moving. Hips are staying locked in. If you just notice in the mirror that your hips started moving, get that right. Do it with your breath if you need to. Take a second to reset yourself. We just hit the midline. We're reversing directions, going to the left. Picture your rib cage is what's turning. Then we get a little side bend. Then we come all the way up. We don't want your elbows rising because that's our shoulder blades basically. And we don't want your chin to come up. We want your chin to stay retracted so that the upper back is moving as one and the neck or cervical spine isn't flying around. Good, all the way around, finish this last rep. So two on each direction. Once you rotate all the way, flex again. Come down nice and smooth, get to that midline. From there, we're gonna to go to our shoulder car. So you're gonna go ahead and take one hand out to the side, make a fist. The other hand is gonna have the hand straight out. We're gonna come all the way up into shoulder flexion. Once she hits this first roadblock, we're gonna rotate all the way out towards me. 
Then we're gonna turn the shoulder inward and cut it back to the midline. Once she gets there, we always go both directions, reach all the way back, max that out. Then we're gonna rotate from the shoulder and end up trying to bring it up. The goal is for it to stay as far away from this line right here, so it's close to your body the whole time for that circle. That's one down. Come all the way up. A couple of compensations here as she's going through it. Make sure your ribs don't rise. Make sure that you're not turning this left shoulder into it at all. Notice only from here down is what's moving. So the shoulder joint is what we're affecting. Reach all the way back. Rotate all the way out. And then come all the way up, trying to pull to the midline, staying as far away from the wall next to you as you can. Coming down. Switch hands, okay, so make sure you get that tension back. Abs are already tight, we're not rib flaring. We're keeping our butt squeeze, our feet are dialed into the ground, rotating out, reaching back. As she reaches back, we're pulling to the midline, ending up on the side, pinkies forward, so make sure you have that pinky forward during that middle part. Then we're all the way back and around. You're scanning your body. Which shoulder is better? Which shoulder doesn't turn here? As she goes into this next one, I'll go ahead and let you guys know which ones we need to work on. So we're all the way up. Say you're having trouble with this part, lat stretch, find that on the playlist. Say you're having trouble with that one, that's the Americana external rotation. Say you're having trouble with this third part where we turn in, that's the sleeper stretch. Say you're having trouble with this fourth one, this is the anterior capsule stretch that you'll find on the uh, channel as well. Just got all the different ways to make your shoulder better. You got it, it's up to you now, okay? So next one that we're gonna do is gonna be a scapular curl. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna go straight out in front of us. From here, she's gonna let the shoulder blade come all the way up by squeezing the trap, then pull to the middle, then back, then forward, then up. Don't let it confuse you, it's just a circle. Squeeze the walnut, down, forward. Now reverse directions, we did both, back and down. Squeeze it up all the way forward, try not to bend that elbow as we go down, pull down, squeeze the wall in between your shoulder blades, up, forward, and switch sides. Okay, so left side now. Don't let it confuse you as you're following along, four, four. forward, back, up, down. All we have is that, do both directions, start wherever you want, just make sure you do two circles. So she's finishing up this one right now all the way, notice the, you can't see it, but the shoulder blade's actually gliding. Definitely check out not only the scapular cars um, normal, but also we have a part two coming for you too, so check that one out. All the way down.
now that you just finished your spinal cars, time to go ahead and get into your hip cars. We're gonna do that same thing, exhale, get the ribs down and in, get the abs nice and tight. We have tension trapped here. Now she's gonna bring this right hip forward, now all the way out. Then it's gonna actually turn inward and get pulled to the midline. Then she's gonna come down to the ground. We're gonna push back into hip extension. Get that knee up as high as we can without arching that lower back. Now the hip's gonna turn out, staying as high as we can all the way around to the elbow, then down. Next rep, knee comes up, all the way out, all the way around, nice and smooth. Come all the way down. Reach all the way back with that hip. Rotate all the way out, coming all the way around. Awesome, good, okay? She's gonna go ahead and just flip around real quick for you guys. You guys need a breather anyway, we know how hard those are. So now we're gonna go into that left hip. Left knee's coming all the way forward. Then we're going all the way out, nice and smooth. Feel the hip turning inward and coming back to the midline. Just keep it going. As you're doing this, avoid any compensation. So you can see Ewan's keeping tight in the abs. Her lower back's not arching. She's not leaning, even though you guys can't see the angle of that. If you are leaning really badly, have yourself go up against the wall when you're doing these. Also, you can see her elbows are not bending. So she is very, very strong in the back. She's using her lats to lock her shoulders in. And we're just gonna finish this last rep up. Come all the way back. Make sure you max it all the way out and then turn that hip all the way around, come up, down, and in. So your hip cars are done for the day. Next, we're gonna be going down into our uh, knee cars. Okay, so what we're gonna do today, we're gonna get in a little bit of a flexion. We wanna have it nice and easy for you guys. First thing I want you to do is squeeze the hamstring, bring the heel to the butt. Now turn your shin out to the side and try to bring that foot so that it makes a circle. From the knee to the hip is not really moving. We're gonna get that all the way up and then turn that all the way down that way. And you just squeeze that hamstring down. Every single rep, try to make your, uh, your circle a little bit bigger. So she's gonna to try to really straighten her leg out on this one. We're gonna come all the way up, turn that in, come all the way down. If you're looking at it from your view and you're doing a really good one, go ahead and stay in, come all the way up. These should, are very hard, but you should be able to see her foot drawing a circle and we wanna to try not to move the hip as much as possible. Try to check out the other knee cars that I have on my channel for this. They'll definitely help out. Um, but we're just gonna show you a quick two on each direction right now as she finishes this one up. We wanna think about the shin is actually our marker. So our shin is moving, but our ankle is not really supposed to be the driver. Switch sides, bring that knee up, squeeze that hamstring, rotate it all the way out and up, then in then down, squeezing that hamstring. Should feel your hamstrings are really what's working. And you're also gonna feel a lot of burning in the shin. That's what we really want you to feel is the shin burning, but the hamstrings are what's playing the cords and directing the tibial rotation. After you do that second one in that direction, switch sides just like she did, come all the way up, come all the way around, in, all the way up again, turn all the way out, and bring that all the way down, good, okay? So now your knee cars are done for the day. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get, take care of the ankles, all right? So just don't get confused by it. Four di uh, directions, there's down, there's up, there's left, there's right, and we wanna think about the ankles, what's moving, not the shin. So we'll start right here, starting flexing down, then she's gonna turn out. As she comes all the way up, pulling that towards us, we're going in, then down again, all the way out, one more in this direction, all the way up, turning that way, all the way down, reverse directions, come that way. Notice that her shin is not what's moving. This should be contracting, but you should feel tension in your ankle. Try to even dissociate with your toes, so don't even really think about moving the toes. Think about what's really happening is the ankle, and this stuff is what's working. So you're finishing that last circle as it comes all the way around, and we're gonna go ahead and switch sides, okay? Go to the other one, pull that all the way up, start playing flex down, turn in, all the way up, feeling that shin pulling it up, but it's also not rotating. We don't want any tibial rotation, ideally. All the way in, all the way up, around, down. Once you finish your second one, switch directions. Nice and smooth. Think about what's happening. We're thinking about tensioning through the ankle. We're not really thinking about the toes or what's actually doing it. Thinking about all ankle, no knee. Dis dissociating between the knees is gonna be the hardest part. Good, okay. So now your ankle cards are done for the day. 
even more importantly than almost anything, getting your toes to actually wake up and having your connection to the floor really important. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by just lifting the big toes only. Good. Hold them up. One, two, three, four, five. Put them down. Next one, same thing. Big toe, lift. Try not to roll out, so make sure the ball of the foot stays on the ground. Hold three, two, one. Bring that down. If you're having trouble with that, how are you going to get better? Just by doing it. Really that simple. Big toe stays down. Other ones lift up. Hold five, four, three, two, one. Come down. Next one, lift. Five, four, three, two, one. Now, last thing, one at a time, we're going to use one foot, lift all of them, then individually place smallest to biggest down. Try to make it look as smooth as you can. We want to make sure that we're keeping the uh, ball of the foot, the other side of the foot, and the heel on the ground at all times. Only the toes are what's lifting. Go ahead and do the other foot nice and smooth, and make sure that the ankle is not really moving. We don't want to roll that at all, so we want to try to keep the ball of the foot down. So you can see that would have been a bad one. Let's finish this last one out. Boom, boom, boom. Good. Okay. So that's how you're going to wake up your toes. Really make sure that the ball, the other side, and the heels on the ground so we're only moving through the toes.